Usually by the time patients come to us, they've been evaluated by many different specialists here at Children's. And so when they are seen in our neurosurgical clinics, is it is because they have a true neurological and neurosurgical condition. There are some primary problems that can occur with RTS that are specifically related to the central nervous system. We tend to see patients that can have brain tumors, and these brain tumors can be benign or malignant. There should also be an increased awareness of patients potentially having upper cervical spine anomalies, such as abnormal formation of the bones around C1 and C2. The other pathology that we have seen in the craniocervical junction is a Chiari-1 malformation, and that can occur with or without a syrinx. Finally, a tether cord syndrome can occur in the lower part of the spine in patients with RTS. Abnormalities that one may see as a result of tethered cord could be changes in the patient's ambulation patterns, such as walking on his or her toes, or abnormalities in urinary or bowel incontinence. The thing with Sophia is she is potty trained and was at an early age, and she does walk. So in the absence of any problem, we've opted to just watch it. We saw neurosurgery for a while for that. Knowing she has this low line cord, we've never done anything about it at this point point probably won't because she's done growing and it hasn't caused any issues if, if she does have it. For his back, he had the tethered spinal cord, which he had surgery two years ago, I think now. No jet, you can't do that. No jet, you can't bounce on the couch. No jet, you know, but it, I, it was totally worth it. I've noticed a difference in him with having the surgery. For this particular procedure and most operations that we do, we ask the patients to come back and see us within a couple of weeks of surgery to make sure that the wounds are healing fine or the wound is healing fine. And then we would bring them back at three months for another follow-up to see how at that point they're doing, if there's been an improvement in their clinical exam that would have prompted the reason for the operation. And after that, we would see them on a yearly basis for a few years. If they're younger patients, we tend to follow them a little bit longer as they continue to develop. If they're older patients, we may not follow them as long. Given the fact that these kinds of pathologies can occur in RTS, you may be better off getting a surveillance image with the concern for one of these problems versus waiting until a specific symptom occurs.